When Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak resigned this year, expectations were high that the Arab Spring would bring a blossoming of media freedom. But analysts note that events like the government's recent crackdown on protesters in Cairo and state media's coverage of the riots are only small examples of the challenges journalism continues to face. In their coverage of the protests, state media not only claimed the protesters were armed, but also urged the public to come out and support the military. Adil Iskandar is an Arab media analyst at Georgetown University here in Washington. This was sort of a reminder that the, even the state media, the state broadcasters, the state journalistic institutions um, have not only, they haven't actually reformed, but have deteriorated in the manner in which they treat news. Independent news organizations disputed Egyptian state media's reporting of the protests. The military held its own news conference and praised state media for its coverage. According to journalists in Egypt, the Transitional Council has on numerous occasions interfered with programming. This is the statement released by Yosri Fouda. Prominent journalist Yosri Fouda recently suspended indefinitely his popular talk show The Final Word to protest government efforts to stifle free expression. We're seeing this tug of war between the uh, media institutions that are trying to affirm and assert their freedom um, uh, to cover stories and the military trying to sort of control the political situation so that it doesn't get out of hand for them. Karen Karlicker of the U.S.-based human rights group Freedom House agrees. The impetus to reform hasn't really happened. Um, with the military transitional government, um, there have been quite a few crackdowns, both in terms of arrests of bloggers um, and, and other types of legal restrictions, or sort of saying, you know, you, no one can publish anything which criticizes the military government. Karlicker says the prospects for media reform look better in Tunisia, the country that ignited a string of uprisings across the region and held landmark elections last Sunday. Tunisia did pass a freedom of information law recently, which was a very positive step. Um, there have been a lot of discussions on legal and regulatory reform, and there have been, I think, a lot of local groups, you know, unions, press freedom organizations that have been involved in those discussions. In Syria, where an uprising has been going on for months, analysts say the space for broadcast media is so limited that the Internet remains the only source of information. We're talking about a protest movement that began in, in mid-February, so this is a fairly lengthy period of time to not have access to reliable, easily you know, corroboratable information. Footage like this, which purportedly shows Syrian forces shelling the city of Homs on Wednesday, is one example of how media access remains tenuous because it cannot be independently verified. Under such conditions, media analysts say it is amazing that the protests have managed to last as long as they have. William Mide, VOA News, Washington.